Well, we're off. I was thinking to myself, forgot to start the conversation. Anyways, it is about uh, 13 hours into the uh, 12th day of August. Uh, heading towards my parents' house again for uh, well for dinner. But the thing is, if it's uh, too warm in my place than it is, I enjoy the air conditioning there. And the air more two, two more speed even. The other race is going on. Here we go. Everyone's racing. And this is where you kind of back off because you know at some point in time they're going to have a crash. Everyone I know that it's a, it has driven like that has had these really bad accidents. And here you go again. Speed Demon. Just, you know, he's the only one on the road. And he's the only one that matters. And this is... This is it, it, we try to talk about works and stuff like that and how things are on uh, an agenda. It's not on an agenda. There's enough bad actors out there in terms of bad characters that you don't need to have a script in order for things to go wrong. You just simply have to let things go the way they normally go. In other words, you remove the controls and you let things fly apart the way they naturally would. And so there is no script. What you're seeing is as you're seeing, the, actually, the removal of control. And this is what you saw with the election. This is all of these, these different riots and stuff like that. It's the loss of control. And it's designed like that. So they're not actually designing what's going on on the ground. What they're doing, and this is what you saw in the, J, the, so, the so-called J6 issue. Uh, as you saw, the police simply standing back and doing nothing. In other words, the control that would have prevented everything from going on in J6 was completely removed. And so what the whole thing is... The people who are being blamed are simply the skin. They're there, to, they're there to create an issue. Politicians, all politicians, need an issue to run off of. And this whole thing with J6 is simply another political issue. And of course they need people to become villains and the bad guys. This is nothing more than simply stage work. And people say that, oh yes, it's Operation Mockingbird to see when the CIA took control of the, over the, uh, the, the media industry, the, 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 the media. Well, no, that itself is a false, is a false flag. It's a red herring. Because Operation Mockingbird never took place. Why? Because Mo Operation Mockingbird didn't have to take place. That's what I'm saying, uh, Operation Market Board didn't have to take place. Because the work in place that created the, the, the sort of the sort of called Mockingbird media that did whatever the politicians wanted to do was created uh, by Edward Bernays. It was there in 1950. Matter of fact, it was there before the CIA was even there. The CIA founders came out of the Mockingbird media. And what, what it was, was this Edward Bernays, who, instead of creating news, created PR. He placed people in the schools of journalism, in the journalist positions, but they were all paid by Edward Bernays. They were paid a lot of money. Uh, they, they got very good salaries. And they wrote whatever Edward Bernays wanted to write. They just, they, he gave them the topic, and they wrote, they filled in the rest. And most of the stories are fiction. But people today, and you know, let's call it bullshit because that's what it is. But here's the bullshit exists in a variety of different manners. And my statement is, is how do you like your bullshit? Well, there is the ones for the lower class people that contain mostly pictures, and most of them are issues uh, that they have uh, 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 girls and you know in various different states of dress and. Uh, for women, they have the fashion magazines like Vanity Fair. That's on the lower level. On the upper level, you have the business magazines. You have things like uh, 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 um, New York Times and the New Yorker. These are all bull bullshit, too. It's all the same thing. It's just simply gilded bullshit. There is the bullshit designed for people of social distinction. And the thing is, the bizarre part now is, is the world of social distinction, 
that was all based on humanism. Humanism was based on the so-called reality of science. But now that science has collapsed because of quantum physics, there is no more reality. With no more reality, this is what postmodernism is. There's no more need for values, no more need for morals. And so now you have not an immoral society. A person without mo- who is immoral knows what they're doing is wrong. A person who is amoral has no clue what they're doing is wrong because they don't have any morals. They never did. And this is sort of the situation that's going on. I say, well, why is a person doing what they're doing? Because they have no morals. They don't understand what they're doing is wrong. And this is the problem that Lionel has, doesn't seem to understand that we're living in an amoral society. So why need people need to care about their children? Well, why? If you're living in an amoral society, if you believe in moral relativity, at what point in time does a person pick up morals? And then how can you then arbitrarily say that something is wrong? And it's in the music, it's in, it's in the TV shows, it's, you know, it's all over the place. Oh, genetic engineering is something brand new. No, it's not. Go read Spider-Man. If you want a comic book fan, there's Spider-Man, there's X-Men, there's the Hulk. That's all genetic inf- in- in- That's all genetic engineering. That's what the whole thing was about, genetic engineering. So the world is the world has been out this has been out there for a long time. It's not brand new. It just is. It's, but it's based on the things we choose to view, choose to see, and how we choose to spend our time. And this is where a large chunk of it comes in. Is that most people are sheep. It doesn't matter whether you're a conspiracy theorist or or, or a masker. You know, rather than an anti-masker, you're a person wearing a mask. You believe the government. No. Both sides, including the conspiracy theorists, are sheep. They follow what other people are doing. They follow, They don't do their own research. They're not researchers. They didn't quit their job and become a researcher. They're doing the regular job and then, you know, on the weekends and whatever. They, whenever they have their spare time, they this is their hobbies. It's a hobby. There are others there out there like myself who are researchers. We go to bed with it. We eat with it. Uh, we wake up with it. It is part of our uh, regular lives. It's, it's part of, actually becoming part of who we are. And it is very difficult in many cases of person is of that mindset in terms of being a researcher. Then it's always with you. It, it becomes part of your personality. And this can, may be very difficult for people to understand that. How does this how does this become part of the personality? And it's because you do it so much, it's something that you do on such a regular basis that this is simply the way that you now start seeing the world. And but the thing is that is it you know, am I picking on Lyle LeBron? No. Lionel Brown is, is a necessity because he's part of the environment. If you want to analyze something, you need to analyze the environment regardless of whether you like his opinion or not. Because he's, presi- he's providing another perspective. You're not doing a good job as a researcher if you only choose your own perspective. You have to go out and see what other people are saying. And then figure out why they're saying what they think. What, what are their experiences? And Lyle LeBron does that. He gives you his personal experience. You can see this. So now you can not only know what he thinks, you can know why he thinks what he thinks. And this is the same thing with Dostoevsky. Once you're good at doing something like this, like say for Lyle LeBron, you can go back and read this in Dostoevsky and figure out, okay, here's what Dostoevsky said. This is where in his books you go past the, oh, it's all about symbolism. Well, no. The good authors wrote from experience. They just fictionalized aspects of what, the, what their experiences were. And that's what makes these authors so good, is that they were able to do that. But the thing is, if you, to do this, you have to understand who the personality is. And you could do this, you can gain these experiences through, well, they're reading. And it's not reading one or two books, it's reading the entire work. 
doing an author study. Nine o'clock in the evening, 21 hours into the, I guess the 12th day of August. I'll have to check when I get back. Oh. I'm heading out. continues. This was the CBD con the, uh, mania continues. It's the hypochondria, the panic, paranoia. Uh, it's affecting people in more and more ways, but at the same time is Nobody seems to see or be able to see the reality of what's going on. Of course, the, new, the, the news and the politicians aren't going to tell you. This is what I was saying before. Oh, it's Operation Mockingbird. Well, this is, you know, the uh, relationship between the media and intelligence, and, and in particular the government, it's called the shadow government, was there before, prior to the CIA. Matter of fact, if you look at the history of the CIA, particularly the history of where Alan, Alan Dulles came from, it came from within the world of media. This is the type of media, the, the PR, the hype, has been there since 1915 and earlier. The, na the nature of work of, of, of uh, engineered consent or manufactured consent or whatever however you want to describe it has been there it, 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 this is not something new it's something that is in many ways continuous or there's a lot of people who just sort of don't want to recognize it, the whole concept of a shadow government working in secret there's a lot more enticing and exciting than in, well, basically library work. But of course, if you're a person, a nerd like myself, and you enjoy a library work, then it's not such a bad thing. <laughs> the thing is, I do enjoy library work. Is something that I'm good at, and more, more often than not, more likely, and more often than not, it's something I enjoy. I enjoy library work. Oh. The cars aren't aligning up properly, so when it's clear on one side, it's not clear on the other. We've got something here on the left. We're going to go and see if there's anything on the right. Ah, it's sufficient and clear. No. We've got someone taking a left turn. No. Some guy with a headlight out. The one eye peak. Okay. No. <laughs> Clear on the left, but not clear on the right. 
maybe. And here we go. is with a lot of people what they know particularly if it's in isolation to other people gives them a sense of status that they know something that other people don't know and people like their status they want to feel special they want to be something different than everybody else and this forms their status so when something threatens your status, and this is the whole thing with Facebook and the Instagram and these influencers, and I'm at the level where I'm now something known as a micro-influencer. I've got enough followers that, oh, yeah, yeah, you're a micro-influencer now. Small, a small level of influence. Uh, the things are, the condition is, That people can become attached to these things, it becomes their reason for existence. And a threat to take away from them, well that will then put them in a situation where they were willing to compromise their integrity in order to maintain their position as an influencer. And this will sort of also change the, the, the the dynamics of the cults, the, uh, uh, the celebrity cult. Now, there are a lot many, a lot more people to choose from, and the, the the sort of in terms of manipulation, these are they're, they're very low hanging fruit. They don't have a lot of understanding of what's going on around them, so they're easily influenced by uh, people like Biden and so on and so forth. And by himself is not an it is not the influence. He's not the person in charge of everything. He's he's an influencer. One of many. And he's basically he he marches to has his position, has his existence based on, uh, well, the view of other people in his realm. So he's just as The people who were influenced by Biden are held in the, the sort of the orbit of Biden. He becomes their center of gravity. So too, so does I should say so. So does uh, Biden have the people that he is beholden to. So in other words, Biden is not independent. Biden was a selection. And the thing is, people say, oh, no, Biden was elected. No, he wasn't elected. He was selected. What we had last time, too, the, it wasn't that, oh, Biden won the election fair and square. No. There was no election. It was a selection. If it wasn't an election, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been Biden. It would have been uh, Bernie Sanders. But Bernie Sanders uh, sort of uh, was screwed over once again, just like it was in 2016, for a better choice. 
well, well what, what the elites consider to be a better choice. And they cracked the whip and said everyone's going to fall in line and everyone's going to elect Biden. And that's what happened. Biden became the battering ram by which the Democrats would take power again. So that had nothing to do with the election, that had to do with the selection. The selection of Biden. But this isn't, the, this, none of this comes out in the news. Lionel hasn't mentioned this. He's always, oh, let's, let's give them, you know, fair is fair, you know, you're not going to recall the election. It's not about recalling the election. It's about understanding what happened and the reality of the situation is that there is no democracy anymore. But the thing is, there really was, only on, on certain occasions did you have some semblance or some resemblance of a democracy occur in the United States. More of than not, it was more like, it was more, this is why you have even uh, uh, out of the, in the 60s, when you had the presidency, uh, the presidency of uh, Kennedy, the Kennedy administration was known as as Camelot, right? Bill Clinton became, his administration became Camelot too. They were reliving the Kennedy years. And the popularity was there, and it didn't matter what Clinton did. This whole thing in Epstein was a, was, a, was, a, was a lead balloon. It didn't flow, it didn't fly. It didn't float, it didn't fly. Why? Because nobody cared. People wanted the fantasy of Camelot too more than they cared about these girls. It's only when it became convenient, in terms of a political convenience, that Me Too ever popped up. But Me Too, and other than a political stunt, never went anywhere. But again, the, 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 the liberals, on the liberal left, and this is why they're, Dostoevsky classifies them as idiots, morons, and possessed, don't think. They're incapable of thinking. They, they, they memorize a mantra, a prayer, because this is a religion. They memorize a mantra, and that's it. That's as far as it goes. They, 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 they parent these. They're parents. And this is how you select. This is how you select the people for analysis. Most of the media, most of the pundits that are out there, are parents. They'll simply say things that are popular within the news and really don't go into much detail or analysis. Alex Jones is, is an example of this. He does that. He doesn't go that deep into things. Uh, Glenn Beck had done that for a while. Most of the people on the left, in terms, in terms of the Young Turks, have no clue what they're talking about. But it doesn't matter. It's because it's, a, it's, about, it's about this whole cult of celebrity. It's about they're the influence. And that's what the whole thing is about. It's not about the reality of what we're saying. It's not about you know being true. It's about being the influencer. And so we're in a rather difficult environment. But again, you know, what's a game without a few challenges? Thank you.